What's up guys? My name is Lauren and welcome back to my channel where we talk about money and mindset as well as my family's own journey to pay off six-figure debt. So if you like videos like that, then make sure you hit the red subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos. Today we are going over my budget, my family's budget for August of 2022, kind of reviewing what we accomplished this month and seeing if we stayed on track. Every single month I budget ahead of time before the month starts and then I track everything in this actual column right here so budget right here and then actual over here and see if we stayed on track and that's really important for budgeting if you're new to my channel or you're new to budgeting to make sure that you're not only budgeting for the month but then tracking against what you planned to spend in each category. So you can see the left to budget is zero. That's always zero after I set our budget for the month and then left to spend actual is also zero because we have budgeted every dollar of our income and then we have allocated every actual dollar received to a budget category and zeroed that out as well. So we know where every single dollar of our income is going every single month and that is sometimes referred to as a zero based budget. So let's start off by looking at our income. So we budgeted $73.38 and we brought in just over $7,400. So that was a difference of $69. So I was pretty close on for this month for income. Um, by the way, this is the net budget spreadsheet that I'm using this month. I actually have this spreadsheet available for purchase in my Etsy shop if you're interested and it comes with a net and gross budget spreadsheet for monthly and annual budgeting and that will be linked in the video description if you want to check it out it comes with a detailed video tutorial and it is an instant download to Google Sheets so you can download it and start using it immediately after you purchase it. So we had budgeted for my Roth IRA out of our net income to invest $100 and that's what we did this month so total to pay yourself first this month was $100. Next for debt, we have one debt left excluding our mortgage because I put that in the expenses section over here to the right um, that you'll see in a second. But for our debts we're paying off, we've got one debt, my husband's student loan, and that has a payment of $830. So that's what we paid this month. And then we had budgeted an extra debt payment of $170. So total paid to debt this month was $1,000. So speaking of the expenses, let's take a look at the expenses. So we've got the fixed expenses in like the first half of this box and then the variable ones at the bottom half. So our condo fee is 201. Our mortgage is 1880. Life insurance for my husband and myself is $50. Internet is 106. Security is 28. Car insurance is 91. Cell phone is 200 and Spotify is $10. And then we did have cleaners through the month of August. So that is 260. But that will be gone next month because we decided that it was nice to have it for a little while like in late in my pregnancy and early postpartum period because I had a baby at the beginning of July. And that was really helpful to have that. But now we kind of just feel like it's not necessary and our house has really been deep cleaned a bunch of times. So we feel like we can maintain it ourselves again. So we're going to drop that off the budget and use that money elsewhere starting in September. All right, for groceries, we budgeted $1,100. This is $275 per week that we've been budgeting. And so we were pretty close this month. I went over by $33, but it wasn't too bad. And if you guys watched my September budget with me video that I posted um, recently, then you will know that I'm trying to go back down to $250 per week for groceries starting in September. So we'll see how that goes. I did go a little over this month, but I feel like I stocked up on a bunch of stuff because for us groceries includes household items and I stocked up on a bunch of like toilet paper and like soap refills and stuff. Sometimes I'll see a deal at Target where it's like if you buy four of these, we'll give you a $10 gift card and something I know I'll be buying eventually and so I just buy in bulk and so I can get whatever deal they have going on and so I did a bunch of that this month so yeah we were able to just be pretty close on with groceries with buying a bunch of back stock stuff so hopefully going forward 250 I can stick to that per week. Next for gas we were basically on budget we budgeted $200 and we spent 203 and then for miscellaneous we budgeted $50 and spent 47 so that kind of cancels each other out right there. So we just went $33 over budget for our expenses and that was because of the groceries. All right, let's take a look at the sinking funds. So starting with the emergency fund, we started out with $7,530 in the emergency fund. 
Uh, we didn't budget to put anything in there. We didn't actually spend $30. I just felt like it was annoying to see $7,530. I just wanted to see $7,500. So I took $30 out of the emergency fund and put it into the house maintenance fund. So I just spent $30 here and then put it as like a refund to the house maintenance down here. So now the ending balance for emergency fund is $7,500 exactly. And then we've got $1,500 in our vacation fund. So between that, it's about $9,000 that we have in, you know, it's vacation fund, but until we spend on vacation, it's essentially emergency fund. So $9,000 in the emergency fund and vacation fund. And then I do block out our family spending just for privacy for my husband, myself, and my two daughters. So moving on to kids activities slash preschool. We started out with $153 in this fund. I budgeted $250 this month and that's what we put into the fund. We spent $334. Some of this was back to school stuff. So my daughter is starting part-time preschool in September and so I put some of the spending for that of the supplies and stuff they told us we needed to have for her into this category so that was a little higher spending month this month and so our ending balance in that fund was still positive though at $69 next for my cat miles we started out with 278 in this fund we put in 200 and we spent 481 a few times a year I do a bulk purchase of food and medicine for him so that was this month I was trying to keep it within the budget but it did go three dollars over but that's really not too bad. Negative three dollars in that fund. When we put two hundred a month, we'll be back in the in the positive next month. So there have been like a lot of delays and like cancellations for some of these orders I've placed for him. So I'm really trying to stay ahead of it because he does have prescription food, and if he doesn't get it, it can make him sick. So I don't want to ever have a situation where we run out. So I'm glad my bulk order did go through and it was delivered. So he is set for food for quite a while. Next for gifts, we started out with $149. I only budgeted to put $25 because I didn't think we we're going to have many gifts this month, but we. We do have some gifts that we needed for September that I decided to purchase in advance. So I ended up putting $87 into this fund. We spent $220 and that left us with $16 at the end of the month. Next for car maintenance, we started out with $183. We had budgeted $50, but I only put $25. Part of it was because it went to the gifts fund. We didn't spend anything on car maintenance this month and we ended with 208 for car maintenance. I don't want to jinx it, but we haven't spent much on our cars in quite a while besides just regular like registration fees and um, regular oil changes. And so I, I just have a feeling something's going to come up with one of our cars soon. We don't drive that much, but you know, just, I don't know. It's just been a while. It's making me feel a little anxious. But anyway, let's move on to the house maintenance fund, which was very expensive this month. So we started out with 92 there. I had budgeted 137. We only put a hundred dollars in and we spent $947. So our dishwasher broke, we had to get a new one and then we had to pay for installation. And from where we ordered it from, the installation was going to be more expensive than the actual dishwasher actually so we were able to get our handyman that we call now and again to come install it for less than half the price we looked into doing it ourselves but because it was attached to electrical water and the garbage disposal it just seemed a little bit beyond what we were comfortable trying to do ourselves and anything when there's like electrical mixed with water it makes me anxious so anyway thankfully we have someone we could call who was able to do it for less than half the price that the like store we bought it from was going to charge so even though it was a pricey month it could have been worse so this fund is at negative 755 now after purchasing a new dishwasher and paying for installation so I thought about putting this in the emergency fund because technically like this was an emergency kind of purchase but the way we work our budget is all of these funds that add up to this 96.55 are all in our main checking account and so when I do my budgeting for the year, it's helpful to see what category things were spent in. So if I just put this in emergency, then I wouldn't know what it went towards. Really, it's a house purchase. So I just put it in the house fund and let this fund go negative and we'll just work on paying that, you know, getting that back to positive, paying it off. 
Um, but in reality, it's it's kind of coming out of the emergency expenses. But that's why I put it here because when I do my annual budgeting, I look at the end of the year totals for every category and that's how I kind of figure out how much I need to put into our sinking funds for the following year based on how much we spent in every category for sinking funds for the prior year. So that's why I put it there. Negative 755 in that fund. So that'll be a project for the next several months to get that fund back to positive. All right, next for utilities, $270 in there at the beginning of the month, we budget 400. And I mentioned in my September budget video that like our utilities are so expensive and I feel like we try to do a good job, but they just seem to be more expensive than a lot of other budgets that I watch. And a lot of you guys commented that your utilities are way worse than ours and like by hundreds of dollars. So I feel your pain if your utilities are expensive. If you live in an area where your utilities are like only one to $200 a month, then consider yourself lucky because it just um, where we live and clearly for a lot of other people, it goes up a lot more than that. And it sounds like people who have oil for heat, it's even worse for heating. We have gas. And so I didn't realize how much more expensive oil is. So that's something really important to keep in mind for the next house we're looking at is to like look at the utility bills and make sure whatever the heating system is, isn't overly expensive because you know, if you buy a place and you think, oh, all your other expenses are going to be about the same, and then your heating costs are like double or triple, then that can really impact your budget. Anyway, just stuff I'm thinking about as we're thinking about our next move here um, for our housing situation that will probably happen in 2023, which is approaching quickly. So we spent $321 on um, gas and electric this month and that left us with 349 in this fund and then finally for Christmas we had 345 we put in $100 and I actually spent $32 because I was placing an Amazon order and I saw a couple toys that I wanted to get for my kids and then I decided instead of giving them to them now I should just start putting them away for Christmas we're close enough so I did spend $32 and put that stuff away aside to start Christmas shopping. And so that left us with $413 in the Christmas fund. So let's see where we ended off for the month. We started out with $10,795 in all of our sinking funds. We had budgeted to put $2,062 and we put $2,098. We did spend, however, $32,38. And so that left us with $9,655. So it was a very expensive month for sinking funds. I spent a good amount to prepare my daughter's preschool supplies. We stocked up on food for my cat and then obviously the dishwasher situation was also expensive. So let's finish off by looking at what we plan to do versus what we actually did. We were really really on track this month like just very very close to what we had budgeted. So we budgeted $100 for pay yourself first and that was 1.4% of our money and then that's what we actually did for um, this month 1.4% for debt we budgeted 13.6% of our money for debt and we actually spent 13.5 for expenses we budgeted 56.9 and we actually spent 56.8 and for sinking funds we had budgeted 28.1% and we spent 28.3%. So that is it for this month's budget. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hear my baby crying downstairs, so I need to go run and feed her. If you would like the spreadsheet, then you can get it for yourself in my Etsy shop. It'll be linked in the video description. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Big, big.